First up, we'll have Wiki Risk, who will give a talk about migrating from ISC DHCP to Kia. Welcome to the stage, Wiki. Hi, good afternoon. Um, I'm from the Internet Systems Consortium. Uh, we're a small nonprofit that uh, develops and maintains some popular open source packages you might be familiar with. Perhaps the most famous is the Bind9 DNS server, but I'm going to talk about DHCP. Um, the ISC DHCP server is embedded probably in a lot of your networks. Um, it may be in some systems that you haven't touched in a long time. But I have some bad news for you. Last fall, we decided we are no longer going to maintain it. So um, everybody likes free open source. Nobody likes it when you decide to end of life something. But uh, ISC DHCP is effectively now abandonware. So uh, you need to think about what you're going to do when someday you need to update that server and you go try to download a new copy of uh, DHCPD with your favorite operating system and it's not there. So um, I recognize migrating a DHCP server is not a project anybody's excited about. Um, in fact, at the, uh, we had a table at the lunch on Monday I asked people walking by if any of them were interested in migrating, and quite a few people said they thought they still had ISC DHCP running. They weren't sure, um, but they were going to wait until it just stopped working before they did a migration. So I get that. Um, I really want people to like us, though, and I'm pretty sure that when that day comes, you're going to hate us. So. Um, we do have, the good news is, we do have another open source DHCP server. It's a much more modern software, although it has been out for a couple of years. It is mostly open source. There are some premium add-on modules, but these are optional. Um, it implements DHCP v4, DHCP v6, and uh, dynamic DNS for uh, DNS updating. Um, it's much higher performance. It's multi-threaded. Um, it has a beautiful REST API. Um, incredibly, it's even documented. Um, there's a beautiful online documentation that read the docs, unlike our ISC DHCP that had man pages. Um, there's a experimental GUI management application that we call Stork. And we publish a lot of packages packages for all the popular operating systems. So we think it's a good option uh, if you uh, need to forklift out your ISC DHCP. Um, that's just a picture. I'm just so excited about the documentation after ISC DHCP. We've actually, uh, well, we turned the man pages for ISC DHCP into a couple of text files and posted them on the internet in our knowledge base, and they're actually the most popular documents anybody reads of the knowledge base. Incredible. Um, since we know you're going to hate this, um, we have come up with a couple of tools. The first one is a configuration translator. And this is basically a modified version of ISC DHCP that will parse your configuration, run it through some translations, and save it as a JSON file. That's the format that the Kia DHCP server uses, um, you know, with all the syntax translated to the Kia syntax. Kia is a completely new implementation. It's not just a new implementation of ISC DHCP. A lot of features are implemented differently. Um, we think, of course, that the newer implementation is superior. Um, but for example, in ISC DHCP, you could have a global scope host reservation with an IP address for a client that wasn't, e they couldn't use that address because of the subnet they were on. So um, some of it is idiot proofing, some of it is more modern, but Kia is somewhat different. 
So this translation utility will translate 70 to 80% of your configuration, depending on how complicated it is. Um, but it should get you a pretty good head start. We've also created another tool to translate your lease file. So when you're right at the point, you're ready to switch over, you can uh, take the a file that has recorded all of your current active leases from ISC DHCP, run it through this, uh, this other translator, it's a Python script, and then you can load that file into Kia and your clients can just renew their same address from Kia. So um, I have a little recorded demo. My whole goal for this presentation is to convince you that attempting uh, configuration translation, super easy, breaks nothing, it's completely offline, you might as well try it, might not hurt. So um, you just go to the site dhcp.isc.org, please be gentle, it's sort of a primitive page, we literally put this web page up over the weekend. Um, you select your input file, the dhcp.conf file, you click a little button to migrate, and right there you have your output on screen. If you go through it, you'll see we put in a lot of comments. Occasionally the comments will actually reference an issue in our GitLab. So this one here references uh, issue number 236 in our uh, Kia GitLab. So we go over there look at the list of issues, look up number 236. And it just tells you a little bit about how this feature is different in Kia than it was in isc.org. The advantage of this is, of course, we can update these issues without necessarily re-releasing the software. So then you can just do another migration. This one is for V6. You have to pick if you're gonna do V4 or V6. This will look fairly similar, except you've got V6 addresses in it. The bottom you'll see uh, some, uh, some other error messages output, basically just telling you what version of the tool it's using. So you save the file, and what you'll have is a JSON file that you can load straight into Kia. Um, we have put a, a limit on the size file you can upload. I think right now it's set at 10 megabits. Um, if you've got bigger files than that, you'll have to break them into smaller pieces. We do have, uh, you can run this locally, you can download the software and run it yourself if you prefer. Um, we're not saving any of your data every 10 minutes. We destroy the container, create a new container. If you read the web page, there is a an option for you to share your data with us if you want. So for instance, if the translator doesn't do very well with your file and you feel like sharing it with us, if we can figure out how to translate more of it, it will improve the tool over time. Here are some more uh, references. The first is a web page where we're just adding any other clues that we get that we think might be helpful for migrators. The second link is the tool we just used, dhcp.isc.org. Then there's a link to the Python script for the lease migration, although that's a later step. There's a link to the Kia documentation at Read the Docs. And um, if you never heard about the end of life, that very last link is the blog post, one of the many places where we announced the end of life last year. So that's it for my talk. I hope that uh, somebody tries the tool I hope that uh, you don't wait until ISC DHCP stops working in order to look at your options. Thank you. No questions? So we could, we could ask a question over there. Abbas Mohammed from Blue Cat Networks. Uh, so what are the differences between the Kia and the old ISC D? And the second question is, what's the advantage of customers or us using Kia versus the old ICDCPD? There was a guy earlier who said that's a two-drink minimum question. <laughs> I really like that. 
I mean, I'd be happy to talk to you about it offline. Um, there are a number of differences. We have some knowledge base articles that explain it. Key is more modular. We have separate daemons for v4, v6, ddns. We have a plug-in model where there are uh, dynamically loadable modules that implement some of the features. Um, there really are a lot of differences. Now, they're both DHCP servers. Um, the failover in Kia is uh, ISA DHCP implemented an IETF draft for DHCP v4 failover. With Kia, we implemented uh, a high availability model, which is similar. It uses a heartbeat. Um, it's two servers, a uh, pair of servers uh, monitor each other, and one will uh, pick up if the other one uh, becomes unresponsive or goes offline. It's not the IETF standard draft, um, but it works equally well for v4 and v6, so that's why we chose that. Uh, I mentioned the host reservations are by default subnet specific in Kia, whereas they're by default global in ISC DHCP. Um, those are the major differences. Thank you. I, I think you had another question, but um, I only have 10 minutes, so we might have to take the other one offline. Okay. All right. Thank you, Vicky. <laughs> Thank you.